The next part of our lesson focuses in on polyatomic ions. I put a couple of ions on the board just to show you the difference between what is a simple ion and a polyatomic ion. Let's take a look. In the simple ion category, what I want you to notice is every ion is composed of one atom only. We've got chloride, just Cl, one element in there, right? Calcium in this one, aluminum in this one. Every single time you see one element, one atom is involved. Now look at my other category. The word polyatomic ion means several atoms grouped together with a charge. Notice what we've got. Not just one element being shown, but more than one. Nitrogen and oxygen. In fact, there's three oxygens in that formula. In this example, we've got two chromines. In this example, we've got two chromiums, seven oxygens, and this huge particle happens to have a negative two charge. Again, more than one element in there, and it's got a charge on it. In our last example, you'll see phosphorus and four oxygens, a very large particle that happens to have a negative three charge. These are called polyatomic ions. They usually have fancy names to them, and there's some special rules that we have to incorporate when we do formula writing with them. Let's try to write the formula for ammonium chloride. Ammonium is an NH4 with a positive 1. That's right, it's got a nitrogen and four hydrogens attached to it. And by the way, it's got a positive 1 charge, which simply means this group of five atoms has somehow lost an electron. Now, we're not worried about how it lost the electron. We just know it has a positive one charge, and we have to keep that in mind when we do a formula. If we're going to pair that up with chloride, chloride has a negative one. So this is really nice. We've got a positive one canceling out with a negative one. We can write the formula as NH4Cl. Remember, you cannot get rid of that 4. It's part of the ion. You simply need to worry about making it neutral. All right, so what happens when we put ammonium with oxide? This time, we have a negative ion that's got a bigger charge. Oxide has a negative 2. If I try to pair up NH4, which has a positive 1, with a negative ion that has a negative 2, we can tell this doesn't match. Let's try to go for positive 2, negative 2. Well, that means if each ammonium is a positive 1 charge, we've got to add another one. Two ammoniums give us a total of a positive 2. The oxide gives us a negative 2. This is a neutral compound. But how do you write two ammoniums? We want to make sure we say, I want two of that entire thing. The best way to do that is to put the entire polyatomic ion in parentheses. This is the first time in formula writing that we've seen parentheses. So we put the polyatomic ion in parentheses, and the subscript we need two of them, goes outside of that parentheses. And we also need one oxide to go along with it. So the formula is parentheses NH4, parentheses subscript 2, O. If we pair ammonium up with phosphide, it's not that much different. Phosphide has a bigger charge. Phosphide has a negative 3. We're still using ammonium, which is NH4, and we know that it has a positive 1 charge. We know that's not going to be neutral. Positive 1, negative 3, that doesn't add up to be 0. Why don't we try to go for positive 3, negative 3? That would cancel out. But how do you do that? We're going to need to use 3 ammoniums to cancel out that negative 3 on the negative ion. Positive 1, positive 1, positive 1. That adds up to positive 3. 
We can cancel that out with the phosphides charge, and we end up getting zero overall. This is a polyatomic ion. If you need more than one polyatomic ion, you've got to put it in parentheses. You put the subscript that you need, I need three of them, outside the parentheses, and one phosphide would go along with it. In our next example, we're going to pair up sodium with phosphate. Phosphate is a polyatomic ion, and it's got a negative three charge. PO4 with a negative three. So that means there's a phosphorus and four oxygens, and they're all bonded together, and this thing just happens to have a negative three charge on it. If we pair this up with sodium, sodium is a simple ion. It's only made of one element, and it's got a positive one. So with a negative three over here, let's try to get a positive three over here. Positive one, positive one, positive one. So our positive three cancels out with the negative three. And now my formula has to indicate three of these, one of those. So there's something I want you to notice about this formula. The sodium is a simple ion. It's made of one element only. You will never, ever, ever put a parenthesis around a simple ion like that. Let's not go parenthesis crazy and start putting parentheses everywhere. That's just nuts. The phosphate is a polyatomic ion. In this case, you only need one in the formula. Again, there's no need for parentheses here. We only use parentheses when you have a polyatomic ion and you need more than one of it. This is a situation where there are no parentheses at all. When we try to write the formula for calcium phosphate, this becomes a little bit more challenging, but really not all that different. Calcium has a positive two. Phosphate, as we know from the last example, has a negative three. Positive two, negative three. You can tell that does not add up to zero. In a case where you get one charge with a two and the other one with a three, here's my recommendation for you. Why don't you try to go for the common multiple six? Two times three is six. If you could get a positive six and a negative six, those would cancel out to be zero. So how do you go about getting a positive six? We would need three calcium ions overall. Okay, so we've got three of them, positive two, positive two, positive two. That's going to add up to a positive six on this side. If we add in another phosphate, we're going to get negative three and another negative three. Here's our charges, and those add up to a negative six. Just a reminder for you. Ignore that four on the oxygen. There's nothing you can do to change it. It is part of the ion and it's part of the formula. You cannot change that when you do the overall formula for the compound. So this time we're going to write three calciums. So we do Ca with a subscript three. And we're going to show that we want two phosphate ions. We put the PO4 in parentheses, and we put the 2 outside the parentheses. Just something to note, again, calcium is a simple ion. It's made of only one element. You never would put a parenthesis around that. Phosphate is a polyatomic ion. In this case, we do need more than one. And when you need more than one, that's when you put the parenthesis around it and the subscript outside the parentheses. What about the situation where aluminum phosphate is a compound? Aluminum has a positive three. Phosphate has a negative three. This is one of those situations where we get really excited and go, woohoo, because you only need one of each. Positive three, negative three, these things cancel out and equal zero. This is a nice formula to write. We have one aluminum, we have one phosphate, we don't need to put subscripts, we don't need to put parentheses, this one's nice and easy. Alright, I hope you're up for a challenge because it's time to move more quickly now.
Lead four sulfate. Let's start combining everything we've learned. If I say lead four, you know that lead's got a positive four charge. Let's pair that up with sulfate. Sulfate is a polyatomic ion and it has a negative two. In this situation, to make this neutral, let's go for positive four and we need to get a negative four to cancel that out. To do that, we're going to need two of the sulfate ions. Negative two, negative two, adds up to a negative four. What's our formula? Pb, this is a polyatomic ion that requires more than one ion. So we're going to put it in parentheses. Don't lose that four. And the two goes outside the parentheses. How about in the case of ammonium sulfate? We've got ammonium being paired up with sulfate. In this scenario, you can tell positive one, negative two. Let's go for positive two, negative two. To do that, we're going to need two ammoniums to every one sulfate. Hey, this is a polyatomic ion. Remember, when you need more than one of those, we're going to put it in parentheses. NH4, the whole thing, don't lose that four. The two goes outside the parentheses. And I want you to notice that the sulfate, even though it's a polyatomic ion, there's no need for a parentheses here because you only need one. Now that you're warmed up, here comes a tough one. We've got aluminum dichromate. That sounds like a mouthful. Figure out the charges on each of the ions. Aluminum is a simple ion. It's made of only one element and it has a positive three charge. Dichromate is a pretty ugly looking ion. Cr2O7 with a negative two. But again, don't let those funny subscripts bug you. You focus in on the charges only. With a positive three and a negative two, why don't we go for six? Positive six, negative six. To do that, with the aluminum, we're going to need two of them. This adds up to a positive six. With the dichromate, we're going to need three. Negative two, negative two, negative two. That adds up to a negative six. Our formula needs to show two aluminums. The dichromate is a polyatomic ion and we need three of this, so we put the whole entire polyatomic ion in parentheses and the three goes outside the parentheses. In the case of ammonium phosphate, we've got two polyatomic ions, ammonium with a positive one and phosphate with a negative three. To make this neutral, we're going to need three ammoniums to cancel out that phosphate. So we've got NH4 in parentheses with a three followed by PO4. Notice the first polyatomic ion is in parentheses because we need three. The second polyatomic is not. We only need one. How about lead two hydroxide? With a lead two, we have a positive two charge. Hydroxide is OH. In this scenario, I want you to notice that hydroxide is a polyatomic ion. You've got oxygen and hydrogen in there. So if we're going to need two of those to cancel out with the lead. You've got your PB. The hydroxide has to go in parentheses because we need two of that ion. All right, we're down to the final few. In this case, we've got tin and we're pairing it up with nitrate. Tin is one of those transition metals that you have to figure out the charge on. But here's what we know. We know that there are four nitrates that go along with only one tin. I want you to think about that. Add those up. Negative one, negative one, negative one. This has to add up to a negative four. And so what we need to do is find the ion that matches up with that, and it has to be a tin with a positive four. So our name that's going to go along with this is tin, Roman numeral four, that's the charge, and nitrate. For our final one, let's do FeOH3. 
with three hydroxides. Take a look at those charges. They add up to a total of negative three. The formula shows only one iron to go along with that. That means we're going to need a positive three charge on the iron to cancel out the negative three charge. That gives us the name iron three hydroxide. So that concludes our discussion on ionic compounds naming and formula writing. I hope at this point in time you're feeling really comfortable with transition metals and polyatomic ions.